So I want to encourage you, bring your Bibles. I want to encourage you to, first of all, come. Come, every week, come. Maybe you might not feel like coming. Come anyway. We'll be here. And so, bring your Bible when you come. And participate in class. I don't think I have a Bible. You don't think so? We'll get you one. We'll make sure you get one. Okay? Okay. In fact, we'll write that down. Eliana, needs need your Bible. Right? Eric. Your name, right? Eric. Eric was oh, the one that oh, said Oh, I it. thought you said it. You see, you got your mask on, and I have no <laughs> idea who's talking. And at this age, your voices sound alike. <laughs> Eric, we'll get you a Bible. We'll make sure you have a Bible, okay? Okay. All right. And bring friends if you got them. And we'll, we'll come up with some other things that you can earn points for, too. But right now, we're going to go back into our lesson. Now, let's see, most of you have been here, so who remembers who David was? Who was David? Mm, Anaya? The boy that killed the giant. He was the boy that killed the giant? Melody? Yeah, was, was he just the boy that killed the giant? He was a king. He was a king. Yeah. See, David wasn't just a boy. He grew up. He became a man. And he had, he got married. He had a lot of wives. You know that? Back then, they used to allow that. Nowadays, they only allow you one. Yeah. All you get is one. one. And so, he had, he had wives and he had kids. And, but David, let me go back to when David killed Goliath, though. He killed Goliath. He was the giant. That was his name, Goliath. I do not like Goliath. I think he shot him with a rock. He, that's right, he took his, he took his uh, sling and he slung the stone around and he let it go and boom! Oh, right. He hit the giant right in the forehead. Knocked him out cold. Killed him, actually. He used his own sword. He used Goliath's own sword to kill him. But see, at that time then, and they brought David to King Saul. Saul was the king at the time. And Saul had a son. His oldest son's name was Jonathan. See, Jonathan. Jonathan was Saul's oldest son. And if things had gone as they planned, Jonathan was going to be the next king. Jonathan should have been the next king. But things didn't work out that way. What happened? Somebody besides Anaya? Anybody got a guess what happened? Go ahead, Anaya. Um, David became king. Yeah, but why did David become king? What did Saul do? Or what did Saul fail to do? Any ideas? Make him become king? Saul disobeyed God. And not just once, but Saul kept disobeying God. Let me ask you this. Can I ask you for some honesty? Yeah. Who's ever disobeyed God? Most of us have. Yeah. You know one of the ways we disobey God? You ever disobey your parents? Yes. I did. Me too. I, I did. You. And if, when we disobey our parents, that we, we disobey God because God says, honor your parents. God says, obey your parents. And so Saul disobeyed God, and it's not just once, because, look, we all disobey God, but, and we say, you know what, God, I'm sorry I did that. I won't do it again. And we don't, and we learn to obey our parents, and God's pleased with that, and God forgives. God forgives our sins. But Saul, his heart wasn't right. He didn't change his heart. And see, he, he still had a mind to disobey God. Yeah, he said he was sorry, but he didn't mean it. You ever have that happen to you, somebody... Maybe somebody hits you and they say, oh, I'm sorry. And you know they didn't mean it, right? Never happened to you, Eliana? Right? That happened to me too. They happened to you too, Eric? Yeah. Sometimes people will do things to you and they'll say, oh, I'm sorry. You know they don't mean it. See, God reads our heart. Already? God reads our heart. He knows what your heart is thinking. He knows what your mind is thinking. He knows what's in your heart. We can't fool God. 
And Saul couldn't fool God. God said, you know what? I'm going to find somebody else. From that time on, Jonathan was no longer going to be the next king. And yet, when they brought David to, John, uh, to Saul, Jonathan said, I like him. I like him. He obeys God. And he's a brave young man. And he's strong. And God is with him. And I like him. And they became best friends. In fact, they, were, they became such close friends, David and Jonathan, that they were, all, they were more like brothers. And they made an agreement with each other that we're going to look after each other no matter what happens. And Jonathan knew that his dad wasn't going to be king anymore. Jonathan knew that because his dad wasn't going to be king anymore, that means when his dad died, he wasn't going to be king. But he didn't care. He wanted whoever God chose. And he said to David, he says, please make sure you take care of my family. And if anything happens to you, David, I will take care of your family. And they did. And what happened was that, that uh, Israel got in a battle with the Philistines. And Saul, the king, was killed. And so was Jonathan. Jonathan was killed also. And that's when David became, he became the king. After Saul uh, died, Jonathan? Jonathan died, and David became the king. Jonathan was, uh, David must have been sad when he died. He was. He was very sad. Not only was he sad when Jonathan died, he was sad when he heard that Saul was dead. Even though Saul was trying to kill him, yeah, he was still sad. If a man came to him and said, "Hey, I've got Saul's, I've got Saul's bracelet, and I've got his crown." And here's what happened. I was on the battlefield, and Saul was hurt. And he said, please, kill me. I don't want the Philistines to come and kill me, because they'll torture me. And he, he told David, he said, so I, I knew that he wasn't going to live. And so I took his sword, and I killed him. He was lying. He didn't really do that. The Philistines killed Saul. He just happened to find all his, he happened to find his body. And... He was lying to David. He brought all that stuff thinking David would be happy. And David would give him a reward to hear that he got rid of David's enemy. It didn't work out that way. You see, because David believed God. David was interested in the things that God was interested in. And it angered David that somebody would kill Saul. You see, David had a chance to do it himself, and he wouldn't do it. He said that because God's anointed. God anointed Saul. And so it was God's responsibility to see what, to do what needed to be done to Saul, not David's. And so when this man said, hey, I killed Saul, and David said, why did, what made you think that you could, that you could kill God's anointed king? He didn't. He was lying. Here's what happened, though. David killed the man. Because the man lied to David and said, I killed Saul. And David got thinking that he killed Saul. He said, that's wrong. And he killed the man. So the guy didn't get any reward. He thought he was going to get reward. No, he didn't kill Saul. Saul was already dead. He killed the man who said, I killed Saul. He thought he was going to get a reward for it. Instead, he lost his life. But when David got older and the kingdom was was secure. They had peace. And David asked his men, he said, is there anybody left from the house of Saul, from Saul's family, that I could show kindness to because of my, uh, because of my friendship with Jonathan? Is there anybody? And they said, yes. Jonathan had a son. Jonathan had a son And his son's name Mac? Mac. Nah, I've already given letters. Was Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth. Doesn't that just roll off your tongue? Uh, Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth. <laughs> <laughs> the, the 
Doesn't that just roll off your tongue? I like Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth. I like Mephibosheth. You know what? It would be cool if you got... If I had a kid and I named him Mephibosheth, so then his name would be... His name would be Mephibosheth Hennesheimer. That's a mouthful. That's my last name. That's my last name. I got this big, long last name. So, yeah, everybody could say Mephibosheth Hennesheimer. And he'd have to sign it all the way down like that. What would you call some? What would you call somebody with that name? I'm just calling Meph. I'm just calling Meph. Meph? No, Meph sounds too much like something else. Meffy? Meffy? Hey, Meffy! Buddy! But here's a problem. See, when... Mephibosheth was a real young boy. He was probably about Eric's age. Eric, how old are you? Five. Five. He was about Eric's age. Maybe four. How old are you? Four. Four. Probably close to Amiko's age. When his dad was killed. How was God killed? Hmm? How was God killed? How was... How was God killed? God was never killed. God lives. God has always lived and God always will live. And what happened was that in that battle, when Jonathan was killed, and Jonathan was Mephibosheth's father, and Mephibosheth was a little boy, maybe about Amiko's age, maybe about Eric's age, I don't know. And the, the nurse, the woman that was taking care of him, when she heard, you see what happened was, let me, let's say for example, that I'm a king, and all you guys are my kids. And if the enemy came in and killed the king, they wouldn't just kill the king, they'd kill his wife, and they'd kill all his kids, too. And it was cold, it was very cold. But for a reason, though, because they didn't want the, the king's children to come and say, oh, I should be the king, and, cause, and start causing trouble. And, but you're right, it was cold and it was evil. It was definitely wrong. But that's what they would do back then. And so when Mephibosheth's nurse heard that Jonathan had been killed, she quickly grabbed him. She needed to get away. She needed to escape. She needed to run somewhere. And so she grabbed him. And Amiko, I'd probably come and grab you, but I think it would scare you. But she grabbed him and started running. And as she was running to get away, she dropped him. And it probably broke his leg. I don't... The Bible said that he was lame. You know what lame means? Why was the nurse running away? Because she didn't want... She didn't want the little boy to die. Does anybody know what lame means? No. Okay, girls, I'm going to have to separate you. Alright? You keep it up. The next time I see you talking to each other... I'm going to have to separate you because you're not concentrating up here. Does anybody know what lame means? No. It means that you can't walk. What? A person that's lame, L-A-M-E, cannot walk. What happened was he probably, when he got dropped, he probably broke his leg. I was lame once. Now, if Xander were here, because Xander's got a broken, he broke something in his arm. His pinky, actually. And you see, we, we're good at we're good at healing broken bones. Has anybody else ever broken a bone? No. You broke a bone. What did you break? I broke my leg. You broke your leg. Can you walk on it now? Yes. You see, back then, if you broke your leg, you wouldn't be able to walk for the rest of your life because they didn't know how to set a broken bone. I, I broke my thumb once, but I can still write. You had to get in a wheelchair. They didn't have wheelchairs back then. I was hurt. They didn't have wheelchairs. If you had a broken leg and your leg didn't heal back, back by itself, you couldn't walk for the rest of your life. Now, Mephibosheth was fortunate because he was the grandson of a king. So he had people to care for him. Most people would just end up being beggars. But Mephibosheth, 
He came in, they called him into King David, and I'm sure he didn't know what was going on. All he thought was, you know, here's this guy that my grandfather had been king, and now my grandfather's no longer king, and now that my grandfather's dead, the new king probably wants to get revenge on me. Probably wants to kill me. And they brought Mephibosheth before David. Even I have trouble saying it. They brought Mephibosheth before David. And he said to Mephibosheth, everything that used to belong to your grandfather, I'm going to give back to you. He didn't have to do that. Girls are this way. He didn't have to do that. You see, that was the kindness of David. He was a kind man. You know why? Because kindness pleases God. Kindness is something that pleases God. Do you think that God likes it when we're mean to each other? No. No, he doesn't. God wants us to be kind to each other. And so David, by being kind to Jonathan's son Mephibosheth, can, Sister Cindy, can you say that? Can you say that? No. No. See? Even the grown-ups have trouble with that name. How would you like to name your kid that? No. You, I forget you, how to say what I named it. <laughs> you try to yell at him, and you get tired by the time you... Man, Fibosheth! And uh, you know what? You forget what you, what you were going to yell at him for. Say, hey, you. What's yeah, hey, you. Your name? Hey, you. Meffy. Yeah. Meffy, get over here. Meffy, get over here. So, but David was a kind man because David was a man after God's own heart. David pleased God. David tried to, anything that David did, he tried to do it to please God. And so he was kind to Mephibosheth. And he said to Mephibosheth, he says, you no longer need to go back to your house. You can live here in the palace. You don't have to worry about anything that you need to eat. You come and you eat at my table. When, when we eat, you're going to eat. And you will eat well. Because that's the kind of man that David was. He was a kind man. And he, you see, because the, the Bible says that David was a man after God's own heart. David understood the things that pleased God, and David did the things that pleased God. All the time? No, not all the time. But that was his... That was his driving, his driving force. He wanted to please God. And so, this is what God would have us do. You know how I was telling you before? Uh, bring your friends to children's church. Bring your enemies to children's church. Believe it or not, there are going to be people out there that don't like you. Even though you're nice to them, they're not going to like you. And they're going to be mean to you. You may have already encountered people like that. I know I did when I was in school. I was nice to everybody. But people were mean to me. And so your thought is, you know what? They're going to be mean to me. I'm going to be mean right back to them. That's called revenge. And God doesn't like revenge. God doesn't I know like what revenge. revenge is. Do you? Mm -hmm. What it's is when, it? It's when somebody hits you and then you, you, you hit them back. You hit them back. Somebody does something to you that's mean, and so you do something mean right back to them. That's revenge. That does not please God. Instead, when somebody does something mean to you, you just be your same self. You, you just keep on being nice to them. And yes, it hurts. It does hurt. I'm not going to lie and say, you know what, if, if, you, if you're nice to everybody, even when they're mean to you, and all of a sudden, and I'm going to sound like Pastor here, and all of a sudden you're going to hear the heavens go, ah! and, uh, and God's glory is going to come down, and God's going to touch their hearts and say, you shouldn't be mean to them, and they're going to start being nice to you. That won't happen. That's not how it works. They'll keep on being mean to you even though you're being nice to them. Only God can change a heart. And sometimes that happens. There was a man that used to, back when my dad was working 
and he was he was working at this place that uh, that made parts for cars and there was this guy that kept being mean to my dad he kept doing mean things to my dad and it really bothered my dad but he said you know what I need to be like God I need to act like God would I need to please God and he kept being nice to the guy and he kept being uh, he kept preaching the word of God to him. One day, God did change his heart. And the man that used to be mean to my dad became his best friend. The man that used to mock my dad to make fun of him whenever he preached the word became a believer himself. And I, I don't know whether he's still alive or not, but because he'd be a really old man now. But uh, sometimes it works that way and sometimes it doesn't. There are a lot of people who were mean to me when I was in school. And I don't know whether they, I don't know whether their hearts changed or not. It doesn't matter. Because the only thing that matters is if I please God. That's the only thing that matters. All right, we're going we're gonna to quit here. Thank you guys for listening. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, you are a kind God. Even though we've done things to offend you, even though we've disobeyed you, nevertheless, you have continued to be kind to us. Lord, as you have been toward us, we want to be toward other people. Help us to be kind to people, whether they're kind to us or whether they mistreat us. Even the people that are mean to us, Lord, help us to be kind to them. Because we represent you to them. And I pray, Lord, that you would help every one of us to obey you in everything that we do. Help us to seek out that which pleases you. And help us to do the things that please you, God. And all these things we ask in Jesus' name. Now, as we go to our house, as we go to our houses, Lord, I pray that you would go with us. I pray that you would touch us, and I pray that you would touch our families. And bring us again into your house rejoicing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.